All right, all right. Let's teach you how to make some melodies. Let's go. Hey everyone, I'm Oscar from Underdog and let me make a very bold assumption here. Maybe you are a music producer who has installed a DAW, but actually you don't have a lot of musical background and maybe you don't even play any instruments. And as a consequence, when you're making melodies, they often sound either a bit cheesy, a bit lame, a bit uninteresting, and maybe you could use some tricks to spice it up a little bit. Imagine you've got the worst melody in the world, something like this. And with a few steps that we'll learn today, you're going to turn it into this instead. I hope you agree this is a bit juicier, a bit more interesting. So let's break it down into some simple steps. So first of all, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be working with MIDI effects. So the idea is that you just input a single note on your keyboard and then some things happen to that note. The MIDI gets processed into some other type of MIDI and then that MIDI is being given into an instrument. And for now, let's just use the absolute, absolute basic sound, AKA a sine wave. Sound design is not what we're gonna do right now. We're purely gonna focus on this MIDI right now, right? So let's take that first melody that I played today, just those three single notes, and we're gonna turn single notes into a harmony. Harmony is really not much more than just a couple of notes played at the same time, hopefully notes that kind of sound interesting together. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a MIDI effect called the chord MIDI effect, which is just gonna play the note that we input into it, plus a certain number of notes above it. That's all. And for simplicity's sake, let's just use the major chord shape. Awesome. Now, in order to make this foolproof, we also wanna add in a scale plugin right after this to make sure that whatever notes that this chord plugin outputs all actually sound good together. And because this is a simple tutorial and I am a simple man, we are just going to use the major scale for now. I'll show you a bit more advanced stuff afterwards, but right now, just use the major scale. So major chord, major scale. And so now when we play that simple melody again, this is what we get. So that's three notes, three notes, and three notes. Cool, so now we've got a cool harmony for our track. However, a melody usually consists of individual notes, of monophonic notes, played one at a time. And so in this case, we're gonna be using an arpeggiator. What an arpeggiator does is it takes chords, when you feed in chords, and it turns those into the individual notes of the chord. So what we've done is we've taken individual notes, turned them into chords, and then those chords, we're breaking them back into individual notes. And the cool thing about an arpeggiator is you can change the speed at which it plays back notes. For example, you can set it to 1 16th note. That's a very nice place to start. You can change the direction of the notes. And one thing that I love doing is unsynchronizing the arpeggiator from the grid. And that way you can play really, really fast ratchets. So you get these movements that go really super fast and you can move that around and find sweet spots that work there. However, you can take this even further with the double arpeggiator trick. So you take two arpeggiators in a row. And what you do is the first arpeggiator plays a rhythmical pattern, let's say once every eighth note or something, or once every quarter note, and it's breaking that chord into individual notes. And then the second arpeggiator is there for the ratcheting to create these kind of floods of notes over that. So the first arpeggiator, you leave it synchronized to the grid, and the second arpeggiator, you unsynchronize it from the grid. And then you just move that around, you move that speed around until it does a little bit of a movement that gives you goosebumps. One thing I particularly like doing is setting the offsets to one or two, so it plays octaves above whenever it does these little ratchets. And now that we've got this crazy interesting stream of MIDI coming out of our MIDI effects, we can plug in a more interesting lead sound. For example, here's a synthesizer included in the Reason VST. It's the Thor synthesizer. This is one of the synths that I was using like endlessly when I was like 18 years old, so this is a bit of nostalgia for me. And once you feel like you've got some interesting movement going on, maybe record the automation, maybe record the movements that you're doing on the arpeggiator, or just automate them on the timeline or just re-record the audio to another channel while you're moving the arpeggiator around. That's also super valid. Add some drums to complete the groove and there we go. Suddenly we are in a much more interesting place than we were five minutes ago. Now remember when I said I am a simple man, I use only the major chords and the major scale. Well, here's a space where you can maybe spice it up 
to give yourself a slightly different mood for your song. So for instance, try out any of the chord shapes that you can find here. Here's a more spicy one, for example. Try out any other scale. They all have a different flavor. Here's a slightly different scale, for example. Try out different synthesizer sounds because that influences heavily what settings will sound good on the arpeggiator. So find yourself a more interesting synth sound. Inside of Reason, I found this rack extension. It's not included in the Reason Plus bundle, so I bought it on top. So maybe you can use whichever synthesizer suits you the best, but I really like this Resonance. It's a physical modeling plugin, and it creates these cool metallic sounds a little bit like this. And so once you've got all that in place, mess around again with the arpeggiators to see where you can find some sweet spots to complement what's going on with your drum groove. And well done, now you have moving and interesting melody lines, even though maybe you don't know how to play an instrument. If you are a beginner like that and you don't play any instrument and you want to learn how to use Ableton in a way that actually gets you some results, try my Foundations of Electronic Music course. It's on my website in the link below. Come show us on the Discord channel what you did with this. Like the video and subscribe and leave a comment to show me some love. And until next time, stay producing, be good to one another and take care. Bye bye.